Now to our next conversation. Global Credit Rating Agency, Fitch, has caught Nigeria's economic growth forecast for 2022 by almost half, uh, citing an unexpected expected contraction in the oil and gas sector, uh, rising inflation, and little progress with economic reforms. Fitch now expects Africa's largest economy to grow by 1.8% this year compared to an earlier uh, forecast of 3%. That's more pessimistic. And the World Bank and the IMF's forecast of 2.5 and 2.7 percent, respectively. Well, joining us now is uh, Orji Demezwe, CEO of Flame Academy, joining us today in the studio. Great to have you. Good morning. And, good morning. Uh, happy um, Good bloody, Friday. Uh, I wish you the same. Good Friday. It's a wonderful day for Christians all over the world. Exactly. The day of passion uh, leading to the resurrection of Christ. Exactly. So we are uh, rejoicing. Uh, that uh, we're saved through Christ. Yes, even though uh, we see uh, it's rising prices, you know, we're okay. not able to celebrate <laughs> uh, the way most people would want to. Yeah, uh, with sure. all of um, that chicken and turkey. It's a big and, issue. Yeah. This um, a period where people travel, you know, exactly. particularly my people from the east. We travel to uh, be with family, to buy things, cook for your family and for other uh, friends and you know other family uh, members, relatives, and so on. But unfortunately, one, people are not traveling because of security concerns. I've had a number of people whom I ask, are you going to be downtown? It's usually a time we catch up yeah. now and uh, maybe sometimes in August during the New Year Festival and then December during Christmas. But this year, this Easter is happening at a very low uh, level, low, at low key. Yeah. You know, and it's a bit, a bit of concern. And this is time economy tends to you know, experience a lot of uh, domestic consumption right. and ramp up of activities. But here, it's not happening. And globally, too, we're of, seeing yeah. uh, incomes, you know, being uh, going down. Yeah. High level of unemployment, you know, uh, household incomes have come to very uh, low level. And even when you are earning something, the power of that um, income is going down every day uh, due to inflation. Even though we have a figure that appears to have been declining, you know, in the past few months, uh, now down to 15 points. But in reality, the market does not suggest so. Right. Yeah. So it's even a big, in the UK, it's a big issue, yeah. what are talking to. You know, one of our correspondents there said that uh, most of the consumers there say when they get into the supermarket, it feels higher. Much, it feels much like higher than double digit, you know, inflation that's in the UK. Okay. You know, uh, you know, at this point. But now, you know, for a UK that has even the more accurate figures compared to Nigeria, right? You know, uh, so it's much, much higher there here than what we see in the official records of inflation. The and it's quite sad. of the numbers. Quite sad. Anyway, we're seeing that these uh, rating agencies, the the, the outlook. It's quite, you know, uh, bleak at this point. Yeah, there's every reason for... How are you seeing it? Right. Uh, I quite agree that Nigeria has to be a bit more careful and more strategic in handling its economy this year. All right? Earlier on, uh, the World Bank IMF had actually had to also bring down their own, um, you know, outlook and expectation for Nigerian economy. And Nigeria itself has been very optimistic. In our budget, we are looking at somewhere 4.2, something very high, quite in a, a long departure, a far departure from what others think about us. And now Fitch is saying 1.8 or below 2%. And mind you, these figures are you know, below our current uh, uh, population growth rate, meaning that if we um, you know, grow our population more than our economy, people are every day sliding into abject poverty. Okay, be that as it may, uh, I, I want to agree that Nigeria has to be a bit more careful if we want to experience any significant growth in our economy this year. Because one, this is an election year, okay, when you see a lot of uh, economic activities, budget decisions being stalled, um, uh, capital expenditure spend, and similar things being held on because of uh, you know, um, the challenge of election. So that's a major minus for our economy. And you see a, a, a more daring uh, a fight or a more daring attempt by the bandits, uh, terrorists, and all the distractors trying to hold activities down in this economy. The recent event, you know, the train attack in Abuja right. being a major point by this terrorist to say, don't go anywhere. We're going to wait for you, whether at the airport or the train or by, or by road. Even Kaduna Airport was also attacked, even though the news about that was you know, a bit managed. So if you're not able to move around, people are not moving around. Goods and services are not moving around. People cannot even travel for Easter. The economy is highly endangered. Activities are going to come to you know, a halt or to you know, a slow. And when that happens, it impacts heavily on the gross domestic product. And people's ability to produce and sell goods and services. So if you look at that, insecurity, an election year, uh, a country which should be earning a lot, a lot more through the uh, oil and gas uh, sales. But as we end a lot there, 
We're also uh, proposing higher level of uh, subsidy, $4 trillion, which, of course, is uh, inevitable. But we haven't done enough to convince the Nigerian masses that we can remove the subsidy and people will be uh, uh, okay with that. So if you look at that and the fact that, you know, we're also, right now, filtering our oil receipts in our so-called egotic defense of the Naira, out of ego, we want Naira to stay fairly stable, and we forget the long-term benefit of trying to find a, a, a decent and a economically realistic level for our Naira exchange. How can you, for goodness sake, uh, sell uh, the dollar at uh, about 416 today in the I&A window, and you know, in the other markets where people now go to find solutions to their problems, it's going for almost 600 Naira. How can you do that? It's a recipe for danger. And that's why IMF has said Nigeria has failed to carry out some important uh, reform. Not that we, we support total uh, implementation of IMF's uh, you know, uh, recommended uh, reforms, but we must do something pragmatic. When you are hurting, when a patient is hurting out of a very big illness like cancer or you know, those are chronic or terminal diseases, you don't solve it by keep, you know, applying uh, analgesic all the time, Panadol. Uh, ibuprofen, all of that, continuously, without having a plan to conduct the surgery that's required to solve that problem on a long-term basis. What Nigeria has continued to do, due to lack of bold leadership, both at the central bank and, you know, the national level, even though I acknowledge that the central bank governor is doing his best. So I won't pass the blame to him, but you also have a share of it, because, I mean, if you can't do what you should do in a particular position, there's something to do. You can, you know, um, uh, give up and go and, to later. And, and the central about... bank today in Nigeria does not have what you call um, autonomy. And that's why we have 416 and 600. If you ask me the consequences, I will tell you. Now, what we're doing is to subsidize this, uh, you know, to make this currency free for people who can access it through their connections in Central Bank and the federal, and the federal government, and then they can easily, you know, uh, what do you call it again, round trip this currency in the other market. And because of that, you know, you're encouraging a lot of bad behavior, inefficient allocation of this uh, scarce, U.S. dollar uh, resource and so on, and then you also for that discouraging export, an exporter who has suffered to go to the bush to find the resources and sell them, he brings the money in, you force him to sell at 416. Somebody who has no, done no job at all whatsoever in the economy will grab that money one way or the other and then sell it at 600, making a margin of almost 170 for doing nothing. So if he has, if he happens to have a connection in central bank or federal government, Aso Rock or anywhere, and he grabs one million dollars. You know, through that uh, window. Of course, they normally document for whatever business they want to do, but you and I know that they're not going to do that business. The, 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 a million dollar means the guy sits at his home, drinking coffee, laughing at the country, and making 100, 170 million naira. He Just does like that, that a week or two, he, he's fine. So, so it encourages, it, you know, we encourage, uh, that, you know, bad uh, behavior, uh, behavior. You know, and, you know, uh, inefficient allocation. And that is not good for this economy. So while we are trying to boost our ego that our currency is not badly priced, Nigeria, we are still defending, even though that defense has not led us anywhere in the past years. We have progressively gone from 180 to 225 to 2, and we keep making the argument we are defending Naira. How much have we achieved that defense in the past five years? So does not tell you that we're not doing something right. We don't want to do a surgery. Surgery is painful. When you conduct that surgery, the economy will shake a bit. It goes inflation, quite invasive. Inflation will jump through the window temporarily and all of that. But what happens eventually, the patient, after the pain of the surgery, begins to recuperate, begins to get better over time, and you achieve your long-term objective. When well, we get it right with the currency market, what do you find? The avenues for inflow. The international money um, uh, transfer agencies, you know, uh, diaspora uh, transfers into Nigeria, and several other sources, even foreign investors, will we, we begin to flow in their money. The money market investors, like what you call the portfolio investors, you know, can't come in today in Nigeria because they are not sure at what rate they can take their their returns, you know, out. If you bring in a, million, see, a million, seems, it seems quite straightforward. But at the end of the day. It, it's it, difficult it, to implement it's, these uh, things. Quite hard so to when you implement. resolve this issue, you bring in more investors, and CBN will no longer be the major source of uh, you know, foreign exchange. Several other uh, sources of supply will, will open up. So it's a supply problem, and we don't want to solve it on a long-term basis. And then when you also normalize the rate, you find foreign investors coming in, both the, um, the direct investors and portfolio investors, they start coming in. We're well, subject to insecurity uh, uh, issues. Right. When you do that, exporters, everybody wants to go to the bush to find something he can export. Once you teach him how to package it 
you know, how to, um, you know, find market, uh, you know, uh, across, uh, you know, uh, Europe, America, and, and even within Africa. With the AFTA, that's the African uh, uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement. Yeah, yeah. With that, Nigeria can earn a lot of uh, dollars through export. When you encourage exporters to, you know, uh, go there and find the resort to, to export. Today, when you have, um, you know, a currency that's not so strong, you have to deploy every resource towards making people export. Japan has done that several years. Japan has deliberately many times you know, um, uh, try to deny themselves, you know, you know, strengthening of their own uh, uh, yen, just so that they could boost export. Nigeria but but there was an impressive uh, update we got uh, yesterday about the customs. Uh, we, we saw non-oil exports actually go about 59 uh, it, It's billion. going up now gradually because yeah. people are also all together, you know, um, uh, stock. You know, people are frustrated, they're looking for, uh, you know, one way or the other to make money. I'm just saying that if we can achieve export growth, even with this condition, how much more? when the exporter is going to come in, you know, and earn so much from his export. You know, what we're doing now is to shortchange the exporter and promote the importer. The importer who comes to report, I'm importing something worth 7 million. Meanwhile, what they actually need is 3 million. And then through whatever kind of documentation, they get the 7 million and make so much money in selling that for one, you know, that uh, cheap money from Central Bank, you know. And, and then you find that even people who are doing genuine business who want to import cannot import today. Some days ago, I had a discussion with a, a genuine uh, customer whom I've known for several years, and they bring in approved products, but they have had requests at the central bank over the months for FX. They can't get it. But now banks have a long queue. Customers stay, you know, months looking for, you know, decent, you know, legal and, you know, approved transaction, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 for, uh, currency to bring in their import. So even genuine importers, those that uh, CBN has you know, them, you know, approved that they are in the white list, not the uh, band or you know, uh, restricted for two items or whatever number of items. These ones are doing the ones that you approve, and yet they line up asking you for you know, uh, this currency, they can't find it. Right. Because supply is highly limited. Right. How do we open up supply of USD to the country? How do we ensure that those who can, because part of the way to open up supply is to encourage exporting. Now, we don't have exporters fighting to get this. And when they export, trust me, the export proceeds that should come in here are usually diverted through whatever kind of documentation, shell companies and so on. Let me not say some things here. Right. You, you find that exporters cannot even bring their money here because they are being maltreated when they bring it here at 416. When they know that they pay their own cost of operation, they, meet, they, they have to catch up with their operational cost based on 585 600 per dollar. So at, the at some point, a unified you know, uh, rate would... The central bank must find a way to close that gap. 416 versus 480 is a no-no. Mm. They must find a way, even if it means... Some of us, when we talk about uh, devaluation, we, we sound like the enemy of this country. But what have we done in the past five, six years? From 200 to 600... Okay, let's even say 200 to 400. What do you call that? It is a divide. So we're not waking up at all. We are not acting proactively in the way we manage this economy. We are always trying to catch up. The central bank has, over, over the past two, three years, tried to do what you call tactical devaluation. But what has been happening is forced depreciation because we have refused to take the wrong decision. I always refer to Egypt, who had the same problem with us in 2016, when we had you know, uh, oil price dipping so lowly, and then we had a very serious... Uh, um, uh, a recession in our economy. Egypt had the same problem with us, and it's, it remains a case study till tomorrow. Even for IMF, they, they refer to us with Egypt. Egypt had to do a very painful surgery by allowing their currency, the value to meet up the Egyptian uh, uh, pounds or so. And then over the years, if you read the, 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 the analysis from Bloomberg and other, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 they will tell you that what happened was that the economy got hurting temporarily. There was a spike in inflation very horrible unemployment and, you know, all the economic effects of uh, such devaluation. But what happened eventually, you know, the rate normalized. Egypt today is Africa's foremost foreign direct investor and foreign you know, investment and foreign portfolio investment, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, attraction in the whole of Africa. All right? So people now find it comfortable to go in there to invest, to do business, knowing that the you currency is stable. Your, you and IMF can out. also confidently give them a, any support and loan, knowing that they have done what they need to do to make the economy work more efficiently. Inefficient allocation of resources is a no-no anywhere in the country in economic terms. Right. And nobody wants to put money 
in such an economy. All right, and Mr. today, Mr. Egypt has opened up their own inflow, yes. and things are a lot better there. Yes. Uh, inflation has stabilized, inflows of FS is happening, and even the Egyptian dollar is also now Strengthening against it, right? The, 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 and, the, and all we know the major battle now with most central bankers globally is, you know, inflation at this point. We're seeing, you know, the hawkish uh, moves from the Fed and, you know, the the ECB. The ECB did leave interest uh, rates on, uh, unchanged, uh, yeah. you know. But uh, right here now, we're seeing that uh, they're expecting some tightening, you know, from the central bank of Nigeria at some point. How do you see that happening? Nigerian. Economic managers must learn with our issues differently from what the rest of the world, you know, uh, does. Whatever they do, we must we must not do to the same line. The European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the uh, U.S. Uh, Fed, they have the right to manage monetary policy, you know, with the assumption that you know uh, inflation is caused by demand pool, you know, uh, uh, levers. That is a lot of demand happening. You know, uh, people having so much. You know, they are, those, those are and cost push. Those are those are you know uh, what do you call them um, uh, uh, debt or loan credit for the economies. Right. People borrowing a lot. You know, spike of you know purchases and domestic demand and all of that, and their prices are going up. And it happens that you know U.S. is battling with that inflation issue right now. And by the way, in U.S., trillions of dollars we are pumped in during COVID. Exactly. And all the money the is falling around package, there. Right. Nobody got that kind of money here. So they have the right to tighten monetary policy by increasing CRL, finding a way to sell you know, instruments and mop up money. Nigeria cannot afford to do that right now. Already, the cash reserve requirement in Nigeria is 27.5%, about the worst in the world. And when you trust, I don't have the time to explain all of that. I, I'm a teacher, by the way. I can make it simple for everybody. There's no time. By the time you calculate the impact of CRL, and the liquidity ratio requirement, NDIC premium, and all of that, the cost of fund in Nigerian banks today is humongous. And we all turn around to blame banks that they are the reason why the economy is not going. Why, why will you give me a uh, collect deposit at uh, 3 4% or 5% and you lend at 24? Uh, you are immoral. You are wicked. But what's going on here? You have 100 million from a customer. Let me do a brief uh, explanation of that. 100 million from a customer in the bank. Central bank takes to 7.5 million as 100 million and keep in their vault under Sierra. Paying you nothing is unremunerated. The central bank also says you must keep 30% in your vault, I mean, in your own vault or in any money market instrument. Again, that's how many, how many, how many percentage? 57.5. So the loanable fund you have from that 100 million is about 42 million. The central bank says you must turn back again to lend minimum of 65 million out of that 100 million. That's why all, almost all the banks are getting hit on the CRR penalty today. No bank can escape that. Because for you to meet up that demand, you have to lend at the risky area, SME and so on, where they said they will you know, uh, weigh it for you at 150%, and they will also you know, do other things to enable you to uh, lend to the uh, agriculture and, and all of that. Banks have to now look for a certain fund on lending facility to be able to meet up. So tightening monetary policy means that loanable fund from any money banks collect from customers, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for my viewers to understand. If you tighten monetary policy, Interest rate will generally jump up differently. If you tighten by 200 basis points, that's 2%, banks must lend at whatever they're lending today plus 200 basis points. So you translate that to economy. An economy is struggling to survive. Manufacturing sector is very low today. Agri sector is not being uh, uh, utilized to bring out FX. We have an agri sector that is a bit dormant. Ag Agricultural sector is the biggest uh, contributor to our GDP today. Quite right, no, quite right. But how much does it contribute to our FX earnings? We need funds at cheap level to process our agriculture produce, to you know, post-harvest technology, process them, package them, you know, market them through the boards and so on, and make them available to the rest of Africa, to Europe, South America, and North America. That means we, we shouldn't expect. We a, don't. A, a, I don't a hike expect. By no, the if, you, if you tighten monetary policy, you are further killing this economy while you fight inflation in Nigeria that is not demand pool driven. Nigeria economy, you know, inflation is driven by cost push, particularly foreign cost. We bring in a, 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 a little, uh, the, the scarce US dollar that we bring in, you know, and it's not enough to meet import. That's why we're banning people. I, you know, I see people saying, allocate, I can't allocate to you, I can't give you. But these guys are doing genuine business. You have not faulted their business. You haven't uh, canceled their business. You haven't said, don't bring in this thing. But you're saying, bring it in at your own, you know, um, um, headache. I won't give you a dollar. Where would they find the dollar? In the private market. So, you know, so inflation in Nigeria is driven by a lack of FX. How do we make FX available? Number one, why must we keep importing petroleum products, you know, prime motor, uh, motor spirits? PMS. You know, PMS and other uh, um, uh, crude oil uh, uh, products as uh, 
uh, refined products consume more than 40% of Nigeria's FX. How can we cut that off? Not depending only on Dangote. How can we quickly allow other investors you know, invest in Nigeria's uh, refining industry? We need to do that. That's a, um, uh, what do you call it again? Uh, uh, mystery, the mainstream sector of the oil and right. gas industry. We need to do that quickly. And how do, how do we actually stop paying lip service to non-oil sector diversification to be able to bring in FX? The only major sort of FX today is a sector that contributes only about 7.8% of our economy, the oil and gas sector. How can't we open up the oil and you know, the agricultural sector through important, you know, your, the colleague that my colleague that spoke uh, a bit earlier, said so government needs to f direct their grants and loans to the right, those anchor, to the right people yeah. who produce this crop, not political list that you do. You are giving an anchor boring to people. Today, that project, we don't hear much about that project anymore. CPN tried to mitigate, I mean, to help the economy by doing that, but they don't have the capacity, the staff strength to do that. How do they partner with other lending, you know, micro-lending institutions, even the commercial banks, at a very good level, where they will feel, feel you know, attracted to that scheme, to lend this in on their own? How many staff do the central bank have? Quite How many locations lot. to be able to lend to individual farmers and follow it up? Those laws are today hugely delinquent. We have the facts. So government has to find a non-political, strategic, and you know, uh, uh, efficient way to make this money available to those parts of the economy, manufacturing sector, agricultural sector, you know, telecom is doing well already, and other, you know, fishery and all those other aspects. Of course, that's a right. part of agriculture. Right. How we can push funds there to generate more effects. When we do the the, the tightening of uh, you know the, the, the you know uh, of supply of FX, we're losing. When we have more supply, okay. our imports happen at a better price, and we don't have inflation going the way it's going. All right, okay. all right, Mr. Quite a lot to you know unpack there. Well, it, for us to do all of this, it has to be an invasive <laughs> surgery, and it's going <laughs> to be I'm a painful willing, just that, you know, uh, process. What we do, we're not always available, but right. anytime you call me, I'm available. Yes. We have to lead this country very well. And as we go through this election year, you also find that you know talking about uh, Fitch rating, election year is a big negative for us. It is a big. We negative. want to warn all politicians to please. Play down on money back politics. Right. For once, right. I beg Nigerians to get it All right. right. Thank you so, so much. So we can have better leadership and bold uh, decision making in this country. All right, Mr. Dumezwe, Audrey Dumezwe, CEO of Flame Academy. It was great having you on the program today and uh, for you answering our call even on a holiday. Thank My you pleasure. so much. My pleasure. Thanks a lot.